First of all, I'd like to thank the organizers to let the newest kid on the block come to present along with a very experienced team. So um, the mission of Editas is to develop transformative curative diseases using the CRISPR technology that I'm gonna tell you about. Um, we wanna treat the root causes of diseases um, and we, just like everybody talked about this afternoon, there's a potential to address a wide set of diseases. Um, we are taking advantage and leveraging a lot of the experience that the previous companies have paved the way for us, both around nucleic acid delivery um, and gene editing. I, for one, am very excited to be um, in this place and time right now. I started my career at Millennium Pharmaceuticals over 21 years ago as a gene hunter. And it, even though I'm not in the lab anymore, it's wonderful to be with gene correctors. And so I think about everything that we heard this afternoon is really grown up genomics. It's really realizing the potential of genomics that started 20 or more years ago. So the CRISPR technology relies on um, an enzyme called Cas9, which is an RNA-directed nuclease. Um, what we're doing with CRISPR is really leveraging what bacteria have used as an immune system to pr protect themselves against viruses. This is a very elegant and very simple system. And the RNA um, uh, nucleus, RNA-directed nuclease, relies on a sequence, and I can't use the pointer, but the yellow is the protein. Underneath, you see um, a wiggle, which is the guide RNA. The guide RNA relies on about a 20, so the, the editing function and the specificity of this nuclease relies on 17 to 20 more or more, depending on the nuclease, the species that you use, of this um, hybridization between the RNA and the DNA. Most importantly, people ask about specificity of this enzyme. The binding affinity of the nuclease relies on that pink part, which is called the PAM, and then close to that, those nucleotides, that's the area that is critical for binding, and the rest um, to the left in your, in your case uh, of the guide RNA, the other sequences are important for giving the nuclease specificity. So this system allows you to very quickly be able to optimize your system by, by changing the nucleotide sequence of the guide RNA. Um, the talons and other, and zinc fingers relies on protein DNA interaction, and this is RNA DNA interaction. And so the ability to reiterate and optimize is much more quickly, is, is quicker. Um, we can also use the common enzyme um, and optimize both selectivity and specificity. Also, interestingly enough, you can multiplex and develop a product where you can use multiple guide RNAs at once with the same nuclease. Well, all the attention has been around the nuclease, which makes it, the wild type makes a double-stranded cut. What we need to be aware is the exciting or more challenging part of this relies on what the cell does after the cut. On the left-hand side, you can see um, when you make a cut, the DNA can come together and, that is what is, uh, and uses enzyme in a pathway called non-homologous end joining. On the right-hand side is homology-directed um, uh, homology repair, and, and you need that pathway to actually do true editing. And in our system, you'd have to bring an exogenous donor, or in nature, it happens with the sister chromatid. Non-homologous and joining happens much more abundantly than HDR. It doesn't depend on the cell division, whereas HDR is dependent on cell cycle and the state of the cell cycle. We are spending a lot of time in the lab, not in the company, not only optimizing and creating new CASs and, and doing directed evolution, but we're also working 
on trying to optimize homology-directed repair in a safe fashion so that you don't create genome instability. There are many, pro there are many genes that you want to knock down, so you would use uh, non-homologous end joining, but there is also many more genes that require true editing, a repair or a correction, and this is where we want to go. Start with simple, which is non-homologous end joining, but optimize to be able to work and address many more patients. Our strategy is to take a two-prong approach to continue to optimize the technology, both the machine, the CRISPR machinery, and on the repair pathways, but along the way to develop products. So while I'm showing you this is two independent arrows in reality, from the very beginning, they are, they are two very integrated processes. We are not doing technology optimization for technology optimization's sake, but we're doing it in the context of products. Before the company was even launched last November, we spent probably over a year, um, it, we've spent over a year and a half from now talking to many key opinion leaders and trying to choose the right diseases to go after. Um, and we will focus on, uh, we're working both on those uh, diseases that we can um, tackle in the short term and also those that require optimization both maybe on the delivery um, aspect or on the technology. So the way that we have identified our near-term sweet spot for those diseases is starting with those diseases that don't have other treatments, unmet medical need, of course. We don't want to um, uh, uh, start with diseases that have other options. It's a, it's a novel technology, and we don't expect somebody to um, to use a novel technology if there's other options. Um, we want to match that disease where, uh, with the technology as it is today. But m also, just as importantly, we look at the regulatory or, or clinical path. We want those diseases early on that have validated, accepted, clear endpoints, that we understand the treatment window that there is enough patience for us to get, carry out clinical trials. And early on, we are going to use those delivery methods that have already been validated in the clinic for the tissue of interest. Or for us, we've got a lot on, on our plate, and we are not going to be developing novel technologies, but we'll in license the delivery technology to match the different diseases of interest. So, um, as we, our hope is that as we continue to expand the platform, we will be able to capture more and more diseases. You can imagine you will start with one disease within a therapeutic area um, and, and potentially go from another disease that treats the same tissue type, but it may be a more technological, uh, same cell type, but maybe more technologically challenged. We'll start with something simple and then we'll continue to expand both within that same therapeutic area and across other therapeutic areas. This is another um, slide that just gives you more detail of where we are focusing our optimization. We can focus around the CRISPR components, different CAS, uh, nines have different specificity. They have different PAMs and different recognition sites. So we'll use various PAMs as we need them for the various genes that we're trying to target. You can also go away from the wild type double-stranded um, CAS to a NICase and use two NICases to increase the specificity, or also you might prefer to use a NICase as it may activate a different path repair pathway. We are developing suicide casts so that you can go in, have a high dose of the protein, and then get rid of it and not have it circulate for a long time. And we're also developing novel mutants that it we'll talk about in the future. We can also modify the guide RNA. That's the simplest thing. And you, depending on the, spe depending on the species of cast that you use, um, we will use different guide RNAs and change the length according to the need. 
We also are working on the different determinants, not only sort of the machinery, but also the determinants. We're working on understanding the determinants of activity within the cell. Um, the level of cast that is needed to get the amount of editing that you need, the influence on the cell type and those repair pathways, the level of gene expression. It is well known that when you have a highly expressed gene, you'll get more editing. Um, the, chromatin, the chromatin structure, modifications of the DNA that may affect or not the editing. We also want to um, be able to make large deletions and increase the, uh, the efficiency of those. And just like um, it was discussed in the Sancomo presentation, we also want to do allele-specific modifications. I've already talked about delivery, and we are not um, going to develop new technology, but only optimize it in the context of our products. Um, there's been a lot of discussion around specificity, and in the last year, there's been um, improvements by our founders. One was a publication that came out early um, last year, um, last year sometime around making two NIC cases and using two different guide RNAs. That increases the specificity uh, more than thousandfold. Then Keith Young came out. Um, and showed that when you have a shorter guide RNA, you also can increase specificity. And then two of our founders separately use the nuclease part um, that is used in sink fingers, um, the FOC nuclease domain, and combine that with a dead nuclease. So now you have the RNA-guided capability of the CAS with the nuclease that requires dimerization to get activity, and that also increased specificity. We are moving and leveraging that work and continuing to combine some of these different capabilities, but also using different CAS orthologs with different PAM sequences. We're using directed evolution and protein engineering to um, create um, more options for us. Um, how do we go about generating the right reagents? We'll start with lots, hundreds and hundreds of guide RNAs, different uh, Cas proteins, and test these in very easy to transfect cells, and then we move on to more sophisticated cells and more appropriate models for evaluation. But when we choose our target, we have to first figure out what kind of editing do we need and tailor, sort of use our toolbox to tailor the product. This is just very quickly some quick data that we have. We've also, in the last year, developed methods, informatics methods, that allow us to very quickly um, use informatics tools to design guide RNAs. The reason why we call it Godot is that we no longer have to wait so long to get those results. We've also developed a stitcher system that allows us to very quickly piece together pieces of DNA to evaluate the guide RNAs. And as I mentioned before, we're also um, creating new CASs. So I'm just going to close off with telling you where we are today or who we're about. We launched the company last November. It should say, yes, last November. Um, we, um, with funding from Polaris, a flagship, and Third Rock Ventures, 43 million um, Series A. Um, we moved into the labs and got them functional around February, March. We're doing platform building and building the group. We have a product, our goal is to have a very robust product engine, both with short-term products that we can think we can push to the clinic much more quickly, and others that require more technology development or delivery modalities to be delivered. We feel that we have a very strong intellectual property. We have access to foundational IP from all our founders, and we have generated additional IP um, to make a robust um, um, group of IP. And a young company like us can't do it alone. If it takes a village to develop a small molecule, it takes multiple villages to develop complicated products like we're trying to do. And so we are working closely with many advisors, um, medical experts, translational experts to, who have the right models or have the right expertise that will help us to move this technology very quickly. 
We're building the research team. Right now, we are 15 people on the research side, and by the end of the month, we'll be, another, we'll be five more. We're a total, we'll be a total of 20 people, um, and we'll be about 30 um, by the end of the year. So thanks again, and I'll take questions later.